Hello everyone, it's Christine here and I'm back for the part two of our cutwork embroidery to make a cutwork heart. So in the last episode, we did running stitch all around and then added in these little blanket stitch um, bridges, which aren't um, stitched onto the fabric only at either end. Um, and now we're going to start doing blanket stitch around the um, outer section of the heart and then we'll proceed to do the inner section. So we're going to just pop up with our thread on the inside of the running stitch and then we're going to start doing our blanket stitch taking little pinch pinches through the um, fabric. So just picking up a little bit of the, the fabric making sure the thread is under so we get our blanket sti stitch and you want the ridge of the blanket stitch to be on the area that's going to be cut away which is this inner inner area so just going to work our way around doing this and you want them nice and close together So I hope you're having a great day or a great evening. Hopefully you're enjoying this little little project. I'd love to see your cutwork hearts. Um, we've got our little Facebook group where you can post a picture if you stitch something and would like to share it with the, the group. I'd love to see this done on a smaller scale with um, a finer thread. I think that would be fantastic to see. So it's Saturday afternoon here when I'm making this. I've just come back from a walk with Travis the dog. Went to the beautiful park that overlooks, sort of overlooks through to the city, over the suburbs. Um, also the, the home of the reverse art truck but again I was good given we're about to about to go away on holidays I don't want to be um, yeah, bringing home things that I have to sort into my craft room because I do need to give my craft room a big tidy up after stitching all the um, stitchery swap squares that I've been making recently because I've had so many fabrics different fabrics out because each one was bespoke for the person that I was making it for And so as a result, there's a lot of fabric out in my craft room at the moment. I don't know if this would be easier to be doing outside of the hoop, but I'll leave it in the hoop for now. It just means I have to stretch across a bit. And use my finger underneath just to help angle up the needle as I, as I put the stitches in. I've got a Travis piece of fur caught in the in the design as well. There we go. Out it comes. Although he is, he does feel my heart, so I guess it makes sense that he adds himself to even my my cutwork heart. Now let's just get that to lie right there. Quite a nice sunny day. It was a little bit, a little bit um, smoggy or foggy. I'm not sure what it was. I guess a bit more smoggy if it's yeah, because it's not cold. So don't think it's fog. But I could see in the distance sort of yeah a greyness over the the suburbs. But nice and sunny and bright out here. Just keep doing your blanket stitch all the way around. With making sure that you get your, your ridge, so that sort of straight section of the 
the blanket stitch on the side where you're going to be cutting cutting away the fabric. Sometimes hard to just sort of pincer the, the fabric where you need it. Try to just keep them nice little little pinching stitches. As I say, it's a little bit trickier with this larger larger thread and needle. When I get up to this middle section, um, in the interests of time and not stringing this out over too many videos, I might finish going around the outside and then I'll come back to do the inside with you. Let's get this, this piece done here. And then I'll see you when I've um, finished and taken it all the way round to the, the bottom. So you just keep the same process, making sure the ridge of your um, blanket stitch is on the inside. And I'll see you when we're round here. Okay, so I'm back. I've finished going around the outside now. I've just popped my needle um, down and then behind the fabric um, across where the bar is and then just popped out here. And now we're going to continue around and do the inner area. So I think I'll work in this direction because that direction makes the best sense to me. So we want the bar to be on where we're going to be um, cutting away. So we want the stitches to come down and form the bar on the inside here. Let's work our way around again. Trying to get those blanket stitches nice and close together. This should be a 
bit quicker because it's a smaller, smaller area to cover on the inside. And then comes the scary bit of um, cutting away the fabric, which we will do together. But it's all a learning process, so. This one will definitely have a more sort of rustic look because I am using this um, thicker, thicker thread. But I quite like that, I think. Quite a textural, textural look. Stitching on this side of the bridge. The sun is coming beautifully through the window now. It's getting quite bright actually bright and warm which is lovely because it's still winter here. Alex is hoping there'll be snow when we're up in up in bright so he can go for a, a ski. Travis and I will just go on lovely bushwalks and maybe a little bit of op shopping who knows. So I do love my regional op shops. side of the bar. Got a nice easy dinner tonight of um, takeaway wood-fired pizza so that will be lovely. It's nice on the weekend sometimes not to not to cook. Still got to do the packing for the holiday as well, but that won't be too much. Place we're staying, got a washer and a dryer, so don't need to take too many clothes. Main thing will be packing my craft supplies because I'm so looking forward to just having lots of lovely leisurely time of an afternoon or evening just to, to potter with my, my projects. And now that I've finished all my, my stitchery squares and they've all been mailed off as part of round one, there is a, yeah, a secondary list, but I'll get to that post-holidays. I'm just going to have a bit of a break and make sure I come back to that feeling nice and, nice and fresh. Who knows, I might have some other new supplies to play with. Not that I don't have enough supplies to, to use already, but hey, I might find some nice vintage vintage fabrics in the op shops or vintage buttons or other yummy things. I found some beautiful antique um, beading and antique um, flowers, um, like fabric flowers the last time I was at the Myrtleford op shop. So 
I'd love if I found something more like that. They were very special. Hoping I'll have enough thread to get around here. It's getting a bit twisty. I'll just let it unwind for a moment. I'll have to make one of these cut work hearts for my burgundy bonheur piece as well. But I might do that at an even smaller, smaller scale. I guess if it's too small, it might be hard to cut though, but we'll see. We're almost at that, at that point. Which does make me a little bit nervous, <laughs> but we'll see how we go. Okay, so I'll take the thread to the back, tie that off, oh I tied off about there perhaps, okay now I'm going to take it out of its hoop but there's a there's a look at how it looks before I start cutting. I've then got my sharp little um, embroidery scissors from Switzerland. I don't know what brand, but then it, subsequently I've seen at Kmart, they have a knockoff version of them, but they're not as sharp as these ones. Um, so what we're going to do, cutting the fabric using a pair point, using the point of a pair of very sharp, fine embroidery scissors, pierce the fabric in the center of one of the areas to be cut away. So we're only cutting away in this um, middle area between the two hearts. With the right side up, clip towards the blanket stitch edge. Cut away the fabric as close to the blanket stitching as possible. Angle the scissors under the ridged edge and take great care not to cut any of the edging stitches or bars. Okay, well let's let's give this a go. So I'm going to make just a little cut myself just to make it start. A little cut in there. And then, and because these bars sit up from the fabric, I can actually cut underneath them, I believe. Yep. To try and stay on camera while I do this. Are you feeling as nervous watching me do this as as I feel doing it? Let's just get that section taken care of first, perhaps. So I think I'm actually glad I've done it at this sort of a size because I think, yeah, it could get very tricky if it was a very fine, fine, fine piece. Probably have to come back and neaten it up a little bit, but let's get the broad, the broad gist of it done. It might be easier to cut that way from that side. Do you definitely need fine little pointy scissors to do this? I wouldn't try and do this with big scissors. Then um, I think I might even need to sort of hold it up a little bit and just trim it a bit like that as well. That's better. Still probably some further neatening up that I can do. Definitely need to cut the fabric underneath the bar. Let's keep going around. Keep going this 
way. So you're always going under your under your bar. I don't think the tip of these scissors is quite as sharp as I as I thought it was. Sorry, this is probably a bit like watching paint dry. <laughs> but you probably are curious to see how the whole cutting away process goes. So I will, I will show you it on camera. But then, yeah, I'll have to come back afterwards probably and just do some final neatening, neatening, neatening up. Just wondering how best to get these ones, these bits cut. I just want to get underneath where the ridge is really so that I don't have those little bits of fabric sort of poking out. It's probably one of those things where it's good to do it gradually. You don't want to, um, because once you've cut it, you can't go back. Whereas at least if you yeah, cut further away, you can always go back and just do that gentle little bit by little bit trimming. But I think that's a pretty, pretty good um, first, first start. I will just do a further little tiny, tiny bit of um, neatening up. Um, but I am very happy to say that I have successfully done my first um, cut work piece and a lovely little heart at that. So I think that's that's very cute and it does yep, all hold in place. It's all holding nicely um, at the back as well. And yeah, you can always see where you can just take a little bit more material off, but it's important to work at the front because that's the only way you can see where your, where your stitches are. So I'll finish neating that up. I'll pop that um, knitted up photo as the um, photo for the video. Thanks so much for bearing with me and I hope you had fun and got inspiration to create your own cut work heart. Take care everyone. Bye!